this is from the Discord this, this week. Statement. Man-made climate change resulting from increasing CO2 content in the atmosphere is driven by man's use of fossil fuels. This is the existential problem of our time and all of society needs to be radically restructured in order to prevent catastrophe. So that was one part. What do you think about the so-called scientific consensus on this notion? And what does this say about the perversion of science as you see it in context of the horrid performance of science on COVID-19? Okay. Um, I would say, one, I don't trust scientific consensus. In some sense, scientific consensus, unless it has a very specific route that it arrived, is uh, an oxymoron, right? So science leaping to consensus on complex matters um, is evidence of something gone wrong. I do think the climate is changing as a result of anthropogenic activity, especially the release of uh, these uh, light, uh, these energy trapping compounds into the atmosphere. In my case, I think in your case, we believe that because it does not depend on complex models where the scientific consensus matters. It depends on very simple phenomena and very simple observations, which we can check. And so um, part of the confidence that this is a serious problem comes from, yes, not perfectly conclusive, but certainly very provocative observations about uh, plumes of methane being released from the Arctic, for example, um, glacial melt. But I would say glacial melt is actually a really good indicator of where we are, because the most alarming proposals about where we were with respect to climate change would have suggested an ice-free Arctic, you know, by last summer, for, for example. Is that right? I mean, I saw many, but I certainly saw that projection, and of course it failed. Mm -hmm. There are still glaciers on Mount Kilimanjaro. They have retreated substantially. There are glaciers in Glacier National Park. They have retreated substantially. And so what I would say is something is clearly going on. It does appear to be anthropogenic. It's very dangerous in the long run, especially if you understand the amount of methane trapped in a frozen form in the Arctic and the possibility that it will be released in a way that causes severe positive feedback, which could then cause human interference in the system to be a minor contributor. Mm -hmm. So anyway, there's every reason to take it seriously, but there's also every reason to imagine that those who take it seriously have enforced a kind of discipline on what can be said that has artificially um, silenced evidence that goes in the direction that it may not be going as fast as we think or be as dangerous, etc. So I'm very concerned about the consensus. I'm also very concerned about global warming. And I think all of these cases in which we see a rush to a scientific consensus, you know, the lab leak being a primary example, the fact that people circled the wagons around the idea that anybody who thought that this leaked from a lab was obviously unsophisticated biologically and didn't understand what goes on in the laboratory or what technologies were at people's disposal. That turned out to be garbage. Some of us could see very clearly that it was garbage from the beginning, and it required impossibly high levels of immunity and endurance to get through the stage where now we can finally talk about it in public. What does that say about the hazard of vaccines? What we can't seem to discuss in public now is, you know, it's lagging the lab leak discussion, but we're headed in the same direction. We're now beginning to talk about the complexities of these technologies we don't understand. So, okay, now you've got uh, climate change. You've got uh, the laboratory, possible laboratory origin of the virus. You've got vaccine safety. And if you keep going into these big fields that study complex phenomena, you will find this repeated again and again and again. So what it says is something about the mechanism has allowed too much politics or too much market force to influence the study that really requires insulation from those things in order to be done properly. That's excellent. Uh, I guess the only thing I would have to add is that, um, unfortunately, many of the scientists uh, who are investigating these complex systems, A, are actually trained in reductionist science as opposed to in emergent science, and they're buying their own press. Um, that uh, they 
there seems to have been, and I suspect that it just happened as opposed to it was designed, but who knows, um, a, a conclusion that the American, and maybe the entire world, but certainly the American populace, is just too stupid uninformed, uninterested to understand uh, complex scientific findings. And so we're not, not only aren't we going to assume that you can, but we're not going to let you be exposed to the information at all. We're not, we're not even going to let you go there. We're going to tell you what you have to accept and, and move on from there. And, you know, I, I do think, you know, as exactly this question suggests, as much as, um, you know, you and I are in a very different place with regard to what we actually think is going on with regard to anthropogenic climate change. And, uh, you know, in terms of the, we both have seen evidence that we find deeply compelling of anthropogenic climate change across many systems. Whereas for many months, the, uh, the mainstream science that we were being told we needed to accept uh, was exactly the mainstream science on COVID that uh, that we were arguing against. Um, and yet the authoritarian methods by which we are told that we must accept it seem nearly identical. And I feel like that that toolkit just got sort of lifted and moved over, you know, from 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 climate change space to COVID space. And that's that's appalling for Additionally, the reason that now we're going to have even more people questioning um, the legitimate results over in climate change space and also the legitimate results over in COVID space, like science remains this process that we need that is the best. It's, you know, it's inefficient, but it remains the best method we have for getting to an understanding of what is true in the world. And we've got these inane hashtags like trust the science and follow the science and people who hear that and hear the garbage coming out of people's mouths will go, well, I will never trust the science or the scientists again. And it's like, no, everyone has, almost everyone on earth has or has had the capacity to understand enough about how to understand what is true via the scientific method to assess some of these things on your own. And mostly we're just not being allowed to even access the information. Yes. And um, I, I think it is worth um, adding one arguably more trivial uh, instance to our list here because it makes the point, in one way, it makes the point more extremely than any of the others. This has to do with masks in the outside environment. And the reason I raise this is that one way to look at it is, you know, an abundance of caution causes you to wear a mask outdoors when you don't need it, and that's not a huge problem. And it isn't a huge problem, but it is a problem. It does interfere with normal social interactions, and we have no idea how much of the breakdown of normal social interactions is uh, being accelerated by such things. And it does interfere a little bit with the creation of vitamin D, which does protect you from COVID, and so it'd probably be good to have more uh, skin exposed. Especially. I think it's actually a huge problem. So, you know, it, it makes people less likely to go outside because outside is now not that much different from inside. And so they're more likely to be inside where they're more likely to get the damn disease in the first place. Where they're outside, they might be actually exercising, sure. where they're going to be healthier. They're going to become, therefore, more resistant to the disease and bad um, bad ramifications of the disease. I, everything about it is actually um, dangerous. And, the, the, you know, the what what's the harm, people, remind me very much of the, like, if you don't have anything to hide, then you shouldn't care about privacy. It's like, well, no, you're misunderstanding things at a really fundamental level. I agree about this. I do think any individual instance of wearing a mask when you don't need one is trivial. The net effect of a year of wearing them when we didn't need them uh, is anything but trivial. So there's some sort of conflict between those two things. But the thing that struck me as I was considering this particular puzzle was outside. Almost all of the world is outside right? It's 99% plus of the world is not indoors. And so a regime in which you imagine you're in jeopardy of COVID anywhere you encounter a person makes 99% of the world that is actually probably plenty safe threatening. So what kind of lie is it that takes that fraction of the world and causes you to fear what might happen to you there. When in fact, the, the useful thing 
At the point that COVID descended and we lost our opportunity to control it, and there's a lot to be said about what might have been done back in March of last year or whatever, um, but at the point you've lost control of COVID, we needed to take a deep breath and say, look, this is bad, but there are some things about it that are a lot better than they might be. Here's one. You don't have to worry about surfaces. That makes the complexity of making yourself safe that much uh, less. Second, outdoors, you're almost perfectly safe. And we need to jealously guard these two things, right? We need to not give it a path to learn these tricks of being uh, spreading on surfaces or spreading outside or spreading to the young, which it is now seeming to learn, mm -hmm. right? But the point is we had these opportunities. We were robbed of a lot, but we were also given some opportunities. And the consensus that lied about outside and is now not even acknowledging that that's what happened, but pretending that maybe it's time to lift the requirement on masks outside when in fact it was always time to do that, right? Well, and specifically it's being framed as if, um, you know, it's only safe if you're vaccinated. Right. Yeah. Another, uh, another uh, one of these uh, uh, perks that's going to be offered in order to right. shunt and everybody in that And another direction. way to just con completely confuse the logical discussion, you know, in what... I, I can't even see my way to following the logic of um, you can be masked outside if you're not if you're vaccinated, but not if you're like I, I I don't see how that works. And frankly, I've seen now a couple of examples of schools who are treating masks as um, reward and punishment, where like in, I, I won't be able to call it up right now, but you know if you, <clears throat> some some group of kids if they won some competition they got to go without a mask for 20 minutes and uh, if they came in second they got to go without a mask for 10 minutes like th th how about if we talk about seat belts instead hey hey honey <laughs> you won your baseball game so you get to ride home without your seat belt like <laughs> what kind of complete lack of recognition you know either this is simply performative this is all theater right and they know it and 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 those administrators at that school know it, which they don't. Right. Um, or this is actually providing safety, in which case, how dare you use it as a carrot and a stick for children who are trying to develop a sense of what to do and how to be in the world and will begin to see all rules as theater. Yeah. Right? It, you know, all rules aren't theater. Some things actually provide safety and some things don't. And we should reduce the number of things in the second category and increase the number of things in the first category and not not conflate them and not be like, well, a rule is a rule. No, yeah. no, it's not. So I guess the upshot of all of this is that where we can check what we find is rampant use of the authoritative voice of science to spread stuff that's doing other things. And it's yes. driving some of us crazy. And yes. I think you and I are in the fortunate position because we've been trained in science to uh, offer some corrective. But Boy, is the pushback incredible yep. when you just try to say the obvious things. And so anyway, yes, it's uh, it does diagnose the system. Yeah.